In this video, we're going to integrate the natural logarithmic function. So we just learned that if x or u is a differentiable function, that the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x, or the derivative of the natural log of u, where u is some function, is 1 over u, and then times the derivative of that u function, so u prime over u. So essentially, we just need to keep that in mind as we are working at undoing the derivative or integrating. So if I have 1 over x, obviously that's going to be the natural log of the absolute value of x. And again, why the absolute value? Because you can only take the natural log of a positive value. If you have a function u, we're just going to make sure that it fits that pattern, just like we had to before. We're going to make sure that du, which is the same as u prime, is present in the um, integral before we integrate. So let's take a look. These two are very straightforward examples. For the first one, I've got 2 over radical x. I'm sorry, <laughs> the integral of 2 over x. So again, if you think about this, this is just 2 on the outside. So it's 2 and then the integral of 1 over x dx. So that's very straightforward, just going to be 2, and then the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. Uh, for the second one, uh, same idea. Again, I have x minus 1 in the denominator, so I can just think about taking 5 to the outside, and this is 1 over x minus 1 dx. x minus 1, the derivative is 1, so we don't have to worry about the chain rule in this example. So this is just 5 times the natural log of the absolute value of x minus 1 plus c. So we haven't had to fit a pattern yet, but let's take a look at one where we do have to fit the pattern. Starting with our first example, as we can see, we would look at 4x minus 1 as being that u value, 4x minus 1. And then we have to think about what is u prime or what is du. So du is the derivative of 4x minus 1, which is just 4dx. So again, now that I know that in order for this to fit the pattern, I need to have a 4 and a 4x minus 1 dx. If I'm multiplying by 4 on the inside, that means I'm bringing a 1 fourth to the outside. So do I have to actually replace 4 and 4x minus 1 with u and du? No, I don't. I can just integrate from here. But if it helps you, you definitely should. So really, this is the integral of 1 over u du. And when I integrate that, I get the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. And then I replace the absolute value of u with the absolute value of 4x minus 1. So that's my final answer. Again, if you skip the part where you replace with u, you can go straight to here um, from that first step, just knowing that you did this step so that you knew what the pattern was that you had to fit. For our second one, obviously everybody loves a good trig function. So the question is, what am I going to do here to make it fit the pattern? If I think about u being the tangent of x, Again, why? Because we're looking at what is in the denominator. du, or the derivative of u, is secant squared x dx. So that actually really helps a lot. So even though I didn't have to fit a pattern, I see that it already does fit the pattern. So this really is 1 over u du, because I already have everything that I need. So I don't have to multiply by a fourth like I did on the last one. Everything is exactly how it's supposed to be. I didn't mean to undo that. Um, so really, I just am now going to get the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c, and then I'm going to get the natural log of the absolute value of tangent x plus c. We'll take a look at one more example, and this is a finding area example. Just to make sure that everyone's clear, that when we integrate, it's the same as finding the area under a curve of a function. So here's our function, and the function is bound by the x-axis and the lines 0 and 3. So that means I'm integrating from 0 to 3 of my function x over x squared plus 1 dx. So 
does it fit a pattern? Well, u would be x squared plus 1, because remember, we want u to be the denominator. du, or the derivative of u, is 2x dx. So do I have 2x dx? No, I have, now I have 2x dx, but I have to then also include a 1 half on the outside of the integral. So now I have 1 half times the integral of 0 to 3, and this is now 1 over u du. Now, just as before, we can keep the integral integrated from 0 to 3, and when we're done integrating, replace u with x squared plus 1, which is what u is, or I can change those limits of integration so I can find u of 0, which would be 1, and u of 3, which would be 10. So now I'm going to integrate from 1 to 10. And now by doing that step, remember that means I don't need to replace the u back into the function. So my final um, integral before I use the fundamental theorem of calculus is 1 half and then the natural log of the absolute value of u. Uh, and I don't need a plus c because now I'm going to integrate from 1 to 10. So if I plug in 1 half and then I've got the natural log of 10, and I'm going to drop the absolute value because 10 is already positive, minus the absolute, I'm sorry, minus the natural log of the absolute value of 1, which the natural log of 1 is 0. So I get 1 half times the natural log of 10 minus 0, so I'm not even going to write the minus 0. And then I'm going to approximate it using my calculator and get 1.5, I'm sorry, 1.151. So here is the exact solution. And then, of course, the um, approximated solution. Up next is really just a continuation of this video. I wanted to separate the more difficult examples uh, from the ones that were very straightforward. So you should have a good foundation now of exactly what the process is. And now we're going to see how many curveballs we can hit.